I have a Kun Sid and Kun Tananya, and they, they will present the uh, uh, paper on uh, uh, the paper title You Are My Life, a song for vocal and rhythm section. So please go ahead. Um, so at Deha. Today I'm going to present about the paper um, of a song named You Are My Life, a song for vocal and rhythm section. This song was written, um, composed in musical um, musical parts by Dr. Sid K. Jamrat. And the lyrics was written by me. So in introduction, the objective of this song is to write a song using popular songwriting techniques and to provide um, lyrics using several lyrics writing techniques. So before I take, talking about the technique used, I'm going to introduce the components of the song first. For major components of a song, first melody, the pitch and note duration combines, harmony, for example, chords and rhythm sections, relics, the words we put in the song and the song form. So each component can, alone cannot be called a song, but music can be created with or without those components. So um, in composing, the word composing means to composing music without relics, while songwriting includes relics. To start a song, um, as mentioned in the book named Great Songwriting Techniques by Jack Pericone, there are lots of um, ways to start writing a song, um, including the title, relic concept, central idea, Musical idea, um, for musical idea is which we started first, and it is create, to create musical parts first, and then um, uh, can be any part of the, um, of the musical parts, including the rhythm, groove, or melody, and then let the feeling of those components lead to other parts of the song, including using dummy relics or to sing without the relic first. And then um, melodic idea and chord progression. For chord progression is another um, part, the second part that come along with our musical idea in composing this song. And the last one is collaboration. This is when um, two or more songwriters work together. So in composing this song, um, I'll explain all four components of the song. Let's start with the song form and arrangement. So, song form and arrangement of this song. The instrumental arrangement included vocal, piano, electric guitar, electric bass, drum set, string section, which are well in, well in two, um, viola, cello, and double bass. These all are um, arrangement of pop song and classical combines. So as I've mentioned, this song uses a lot of um, techniques included to combine the pop song and uh, um, classical arrangement together. For the song form, this is the song form of the song. We use um, different sets of melody and chord progression in each section to make the contrast. Let's move on to the melody. So as I've mentioned, melody consists of pitch, harmony, rhythm, and relics. So um, melody in popular music does not, doesn't need to be complex in terms of rhythmic pattern, pitch, or motivic transformation because purpose of writing the pop song is to be catchy and easy to remember and sing along at the first listening. So um, musical phrasing, conjunction, or this function, melodic motion, and breath length are very important in writing the pop song. The uses of notes and rates help emphasize um, the melody and make the relic stand out if you use the correct facing. Vocal range is another important thing to be considered because it has to be singable for the singer. Um, the uses of classical theory has been included in this song and the uses of motif. There is only one motif, main motif throughout the song, so it developed repeat and modified of the triple, triplet and shuffle field. As you can see in the notes below, this is the 
um, example of the groove or the um, the tempo we used in here. Oh, sorry. So, um, uh, let's look close closer into each section. First one, the verse. It includes for musical phrases and modified. Um, you can see the melodic contour. At the first fret, it's like up, down, and up, while the second is like up and down. So we modified a bit. And then the second one, the pre-chorus, included seven musical phrases. This is not the usual phrase we use, so it's an unbalanced phrase to um, create, create the curiosity. And then the chorus, there's four musical phrases, but the contour of melody is contrast to the worst and it reduced the spacing of the phrase into half beat. So to conclude the melody section, each phrase starts at the second beat to provide the unstable feeling of the section and unbalanced phrase in pre-chorus create the tension to be resolved in the chorus section. Sorry. So let's move on to the harmony. About the harmony, um, the keys that appears in the song mainly are E minor and E flat major, but because we have a lot of um, technique of modulation that we used included um, relative key, common tone modulation, common chord modulation, pre vote chord, and mode mixture, that provides some um, tonal key that appears um, included G major and C Lydian in some parts of the song. Let's say the techniques we use in writing harmony of the song. First one, the relative key modulation, as we can see here. Um, it modulates from E minor to G here. Um, sorry that the picture is like cut oh, here. It's relative key modulation, I'm sorry. Relative key modulation from E minor to G major. And then another one is like, the other modulation techniques you can see we're using pre vote chord here which um, modulate back from G major to E minor while the first this this one the E minor acts more both um, the six minor in key G and one minor in key E minor sorry um, minor key power progression is another thing that we use so this one is minor key power progression is the powerful progression that um, uh, popular to use and um, as you can see the B the seven flat seven act as the dominant in aeolian mode so it's resolved to one minor another thing is the deceptive so resolution is in the this part is like five to six minor seven. It's a type of cadence that doesn't resolve to one, but resolve to three minor or six minor. Let's move on to the relics parts. So as I've mentioned, this song was um, created in musical part first, and then um, I composed the relics after that. So. The first thing that appears to be the core story of the song is the plane crash on the sea because um, it's matched with the heavy strong mood of the song due to the arrangement and musical part of the song. So um, first thing to be considered while writing the relic in English is the syllable and straits of the word. And I try to um, preserve the accent of the melody of the song so it's quite challenging. And the main technique we use in writing lyrics of the song are object writing and metaphor making. Object writing method is simply to explain um, the object into seven sense bound that human can sense, including the five normal senses, touch, sight, hearing, smell, and taste, um, which are the organic senses. And the additional senses are kinetic, and um, I'm sorry, um, these, the five normal senses and two additional senses, which are, are organic and kinetic. So the organic senses are human inner bodily function, included heartbeat, pulse, or pain physically. And the kinetic senses are like more related to the world around. 
for example, like sickness, feeling dizzy or being crazy. So um, writing, the object writing um, mainly have three steps, which are the first one is set timer to 10 minutes and then like write anything about that object and then analyze it into um, the senses and then pick the useful information out of it and write the relics is like um, compose the story into relic which match the melody. So this is what it will look like in step in each step, like writing and then um, make it into each census and then pick the useful information here. So um, the second second um, second technique that we used. Um, this was mentioned from the song, from the book, Writing Better Relic by Pat Pattison. So Mr. Pat said it is one of the most difficult but powerful methods in which to bring non-related things together to match them into the same thing in same aspect. In short, a metaphor is a collision between ideas that one idea collided with another idea. So it's simply to, to match. Um, non-related things. We used a lot of metaphor in this song, but I picked three examples of it. The first one is like a plane crash. It means life in this song. So as I mentioned in the song, plane of my life just crashed on the sea. It means struggling in the worst situation of a lifetime. The second one is you light up hope. It means someone or something came to help, the, came to save the narrator. So as written in the song is like, you came from the sky to light up hope. It gives the great area for like the Im imagination that who you are or what you are. You can be maybe angel or someone to save, but you came from sky. So try to make it mean like the good thing to help here and surely come to help. Um, you are my life means the serious version of love is like and from now on you are my life is something to say it sincerely not just like popular or fun relationship so it made the depth of this song so this is the final version of the relics let's um hear it i cut the pre-chorus and chorus section in here <laughs> Uh, you, you almost run out of time now. We have about one minute. So please go on. I'm sorry. Uh, you have uh, about one minute left. So would you please move on? Okay. okay. Um, so in conclusion, this is the col collaborative project between songwriter and the real exist. So um, it used the major use of popular musical music writing techniques and it start with the musical idea which results in the main motif and its development um, techniques and it's taking the aspect from classical composition as you can see um, we collaborate the classical and pop song writing together and it's a pop song um, with string orchestral arrangement um, the writing of relic was being written separately from the musical parts of that, as I've mentioned. So the relic -like writing technique we used are the object writing and metaphor making. This music can be written, uh, can be listened in other sound crown. You can follow the link. Okay, um, thank you for listening. Hi. Great, thank you very much, Kuning Tananya. Thank you, hi. Uh, so uh, we now open up uh, the floor for uh, a discussion or, or questions? Do we have any questions from 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 the audience? Yeah. 
to please have at, at least one. <laughs> well, maybe I, I, I will start then. Uh, well, you, you said uh, uh, you use uh, uh, popular po popular song writing technique and, and also classical technique. Uh, would, would, could you elaborate further uh, which classical techniques that, that you actually use in the songs? Okay, so the classical techniques included the classical theory that we apply here. So it's like the relative, the, the modulation techniques, um, the way to um, resolve or um, like the, I'm sorry, um, the cadence and like the arrangement of musical included the musical orchestral something like that <laughs> so in, in harmony and and the use of instruments itself yeah can i answer this too as the co-author yeah hey, please do um the techniques also applied for the melodic part as well because uh, when i first wrote the music, um, my mindset was aiming for the classical side and then I had to cut some of the techniques out and then um, basically we still use the sequencing techniques and then augmentation, diminution and so on. So we try to cut them as much as we can so that the melody is um, become simpler and easy to listening to and easy to understand and then easy to follow by the audience. And also the harmony itself is that we try to make the modulation as smooth as possible. But then we try to we try to avoid like um, the expected the expectation of the cadence by modulation to the relative key or by to the uh, mode mixture or by to another totally new key. For example, the whole song uh, is running around E minor. G major and then sometimes C lydian, but suddenly for the solo section, we just modulate to E flat major, just right away, just like that. So it's more like sometimes we just like uh, we try to avoid all the uh, expectation of the key changing from the classical side, and then try to you know create something new from there. That's about it. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, any more questions from 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 home? Well, I, I guess not. Uh, shall we go on or? or... Yes, please um, move to the next presenter who is Ajahn Sid. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Kun uh, uh, Tananda and, and also Ajahn Sid. Uh, 